Okay, in this video I want to talk about factoring trinomials by trial and error. And in particular I'm going to factor a quadratic expression. So a few remarks. Um, first off, even, even this, uh, this problem that looks, you know, probably not too bad, right? The numbers aren't too big. It, even this can be very, very, very tedious. Likewise, if what we are about to do doesn't necessarily, if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean that, that this doesn't necessarily factor. It just means that it's not going to factor with nice uh, rational numbers is basically what it's going to mean. So let's talk about this tedious procedure. And unfortunately, these are extremely common type of problems, and you're going to just see them all the time. So life isn't always fair. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two sets of parentheses. I'm going to put two terms in each set of parentheses. When I distribute everything out, I want to get the, you know, this 3x squared plus x minus 4, I want to get that back. Okay, when I multiply the first two terms, I'm going to try to get the 3x squared. Well, the only way to get the x squared would be to have an x and an x, um, at least if we use, you know, whole number exponents. Likewise, to get 3, the only thing I can really use is a 3 and a 1, again, using whole numbers. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now the numbers we put, uh, the second numbers we put in each set of parentheses, we're going to those have to multiply together to give us our negative four. So already to me this is where it gets a little tricky because we're thinking what numbers multiply to negative four? Well, there's positive one and there's negative four. Likewise, negative one and positive four would work. Also, we could use 2 and negative 2. Those would multiply to give me, again, I'm looking for numbers that multiply uh, to negative 4. Again, whatever the constant is. So already, okay, well, I've got three, you know, three numbers. But the problem is, you know, if I put the positive 1 here, and the negative 4 in the second set, I can multiply that out and check. That's not the same thing as if I put the minus 4 in the first spot and the positive 1 in the second spot. So in a sense, you know, you're really going to have to look at lots of different sets of numbers and you're going to have to sort of look at them one way and then flip them and look at them the other way. So this is where I'm saying where it gets really tedious because to me if this factors nicely There'll either be a positive 1 and a negative 4, or there'll be a negative 4 here and a positive 1 here. From the second set, um, it says maybe there's a negative 1 here and a positive 4 here. Likewise, maybe those flip and we have a positive 4 first and a negative 1 second. Well, 2 and negative 2, um, you'd have positive 2, negative 2, or you could flip that and have negative 2 and positive 2. So already there's sort of six possibilities of what I'm going to have to check. And the fun part is there's no guarantee that any of these will even work. And there's no guarantee that just because they don't work doesn't mean it doesn't factor. So uh, almost seems unfair. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start checking. Um, so I'm going to look at the first... Uh, the first numbers, I have 3x, I'll use positive 1 in the first set of parentheses, and I'll use, uh, so again, I'm just filling in, I'm basically just filling this in with these numbers, so positive 1, and then I'm going to use x minus 4, and I'm going to multiply this out and think, does this give me 3x squared plus x minus 4? Well, 3x times x will be 3x squared. I'll get 3x times negative 4, that's negative 12x. I'll get a positive 1x on the inside, and then a negative 4. Well, if you combine your like terms, I think we'll get a 3x squared minus 11x, but we want just positive 1x. So what does that tell me? It tells me, well, that's not the correct factorization. So I know this particular combination does not work. Then I go to the next one, okay? So we had 3x and x. And, well, maybe I'll try minus 4 and plus 1. So if I distribute these out, I'll get a 3x squared. I'll get a positive 3x. On the inside, I'll get a negative 4x. 
and then it looks like I get a negative 4. If you combine uh, the middle terms, sorry that got cut off a little bit, if you combine the middle terms, 3x minus 4x is negative x, but we want a positive x. So close, but no cigar. So again, that means that that one doesn't work. Okay, so that particular combination does not work. Let's try. Um, let's try the. Uh, let's try this one, uh, just because I know it's going to work, so this video won't drag out forever. Um, so let's try 3x, and maybe we jump and we put the positive 4 in the first set of parentheses, and the x minus 1 in the second set of parentheses. If I multiply that out, I'll get 3x times x, which is 3x squared. I'll get 3x times negative 1, which is negative 3x. On the inside, I get a positive 4x, and then we get our negative 4. And hey, if you simplify this down, we get 3x squared, negative 3x plus 4x is positive 1x, minus 4. So that means we have now found the correct factorization. It's 3x plus 4 and uh, positive 1x minus 1. So again, I kind of, you know, jumped the gun a little bit. You know, you could have checked this and found it didn't work. You know, hopefully you didn't check 2, negative 2, and negative 2, 2 until you finally got to that one. So you can see that already it's very tedious. The worst part is going to be if the number in front of the x squared has lots of factors. Because then you have to look at uh, all the different combinations of that one as well. So this is definitely something that's been giving, I think, algebra students uh, nightmares and, and uh, headaches for a long time. It takes a lot of practice. I'm, you know, even still, sometimes I see one of these and it takes me, you know, a little bit of time to play with it and get it correct. And, you know, at this point I'm relatively comfortable and relatively quick with my arithmetic and I still find them tedious. So don't get discouraged. Um, just practice, practice, practice. I think that's really all that you can do for these types of problems. So, all right, I hope the explanation makes sense. Again, you're just looking at factors of the constant, uh, factors of the leading coefficient. And then you're just playing with all those combinations until hopefully you stumble upon the right one.